Walking through Cold Spring Harbour Laboratory, I often think of the footsteps that I have followed. More than 150 Nobel Prize winners have walked on this same path to share their scientific advances in the fields of cancer, plant biology, and neuroscience. Today, our scientists, along with the 12,000 researchers from around the world, assemble annually at Cold Spring Harbour Laboratory meetings and courses to lay the groundwork for biology's future. There's really no other place that I know of that has this combination of fantastic scientists on the campus, but also this convening ability uh, to bring other groups here uh, for some of the best meetings that occur anywhere in the world. Just excellence in everything we do. Have the best meeting, publish the best books, teach the best courses, make real scientific discoveries. Uh, Cold Spring Harbor has sort of placed themselves uh, in the center of both great science and great education. Recent advancements by our scientists in human health could not be possible without this dynamic environment of collaboration. We have focused on not only the genetics of neurological disorders such as autism, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder and depression, but we have started a very, very interesting cognition program to understand how the brain computes and makes decisions. Part of this is understanding how the brain networks uh, work. And Pavel Austin is one of our leading scientists who really understands and has developed technologies to image all of these networks in the brain. By screening uh, genetic mouse models of autism and schizophrenia, we can identify brain regions that are specifically changed in the mutant mice. We can then use these regions as a biomarkers for screening drugs in preclinical pre research. This will enable us to really understand the full networks of the brain in the normal brain, but also understand how they are changed in brains with neurological disorders. We think our approach with uh, screening drugs in genetic mouse models will allow us to have therapies that will be targeted for specific populations of patients. Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory has long been a leader in the field of molecular biology and genetics, and the field of molecular biology that has really propelled understanding of a lot of different diseases in neuroscience and cancer and others. As part of our Cancer Therapeutics Initiative, I recruited Dr. David Tuverson, who is a practicing oncologist who spent the last eight years in Cambridge in England. Cancer Therapeutics Initiative really has two objectives. One is to identify much more active therapeutics for cancer. The second objective, which is related to the first one, is to develop means for knowing whether our therapies are working. What do we need to do? We need to kill the cancer cell, it's obvious. But we need to do it in such a way that we see the cells dying and we see the normal cells living. We're looking to invent new diagnostics while we're developing these new therapeutics. These don't exist in the world today. Dave has come here to really help us lead the development of our basic research towards cancer therapy in the clinic. I think the lab's in a very strong position to do something important. Without Dave, we wouldn't be as good. You know, we had to have a, someone whose job is to cure cancer. When I was deciding about coming uh, back to America, I got a phone call from uh, a mother of a patient. The mother was younger than me. The patient was younger than 15. And he was a patient at St. Jude's Hospital. They had seen the first case of pancreas cancer in history. And the mother asked me what could be done. And it was an awful conversation. I didn't become a pediatric oncologist because I thought that would be the hardest job anyone could ever do. I mean, yet here was a child dying of pancreas cancer. And unfortunately, the young fellow, he only lasted a few months. These examples become badges that you wear um, inside of you. And um, although at some level depressing, they are also very motivational. Our initiative has an endpoint, which is to have real answers and real therapies. I think we can do it. That's, that's why I'm here. Not so in 10 years we can report about 10 new genes, but rather tell you important things about how we have real therapies for people you love and protect them from ever getting this problem in the first place. I'd like to say someday we're actually not going to stop treating cancer, we're going to cure it. That's my real dream.
As we take the next step in our efforts to develop more effective approaches to treating cancer and neurological diseases, our outstanding basic science will be the driving force to success. It takes a village of science to make all of this possible, and we appreciate you being a part of our community.